All right, everybody. Well, welcome to our first college assembly for term four. Um, it's still virtual. Obviously, we're still at home, but we are returning, and isn't that great news? So we'll get through the assembly today, share with you um, some of the information you'll need to know as we prepare to return, answer some of your questions, I hope, uh, during the assembly, and show you some of the things you've got to look, for to, to look forward to uh, as we return in, in the next week or two. Okay, so on that note, I'm, I'm Zooming from home, um, but Mr. Simich is running the, the IT at school. So with our next slide, we will begin in prayer. And as usual, we, we keep all of our staff, students, families in our prayers. Um, our wider community and those who've been affected by COVID over the past uh, months, many months, but also a, a prayer of thanks that we will be together very soon again. Okay, one more slide, Mr. Simich. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. So I chose a prayer of encouragement uh, upon our return. You are the God of all comfort when we hurt. You are the Prince of Peace when we feel anxious. You are the Lord of hosts when we feel alone. You are the Good Shepherd when we feel lost. You are our strong tower when we feel battered by the storm. We take our prayers, St. Patrick, pray for us, and the Father and the Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. We acknowledge the Derek people, who are the traditional custodians of the land on which Delaney sits, and we acknowledge the Aboriginal people from all the communities from where you are zooming in from at home. They have cared, lived on and cared for the lands for tens of thousands of years, and they hold their the traditions storylines and sunlines. We pay respect to the past, present and future elders of the Darug Nation. We extend that Aboriginal to other, we extend that respect to other Aboriginal people present and we commit ourselves to work towards ongoing reconciliation. We also acknowledge our, patric our patrician heritage, a proud tradition of faithful service on which Delaney has been built. We acknowledge the patrician brothers past and present who have served the Laney College and the many communities throughout the world. Well, that starts our meeting, and I'm going to hand straight over to Mr. Easton to take it away from the from the school site. Thanks, Mr. Easton. Okay. Um, to, thank you, Mr. Simich. Just uh, working with a bit of IT here as we work between sites. Um, well, welcome everybody. Welcome parents, friends, students, staff. Uh, we're really looking forward to the opportunity of being back on site. I'd like to say a really heartfelt thank you to start off with and, and thank you particularly to parents and families for supporting their sons and daughters through what has been a, an extremely difficult period of time. It's um, obviously easy to say we've gone through an unprecedented period of history over the last couple of years, but the significance of students not being able to come to school not being able to engage fully in face-to-face -face learning, to laugh and uh, play and enjoy the company of their friends and peers. It's been a very, very difficult time. So it is, is significant and, and really thank you for your support. Thank you for continuing your commitment and journey with Delaney. And we look forward to the many exciting years ahead. And of course, particularly to our year 12 students who are coming to the end of 13 years of schooling and their, their final journey has obviously been uh, affected significantly. In that period of time where you get to enjoy being leaders of the college uh, is somewhat diminished when you're, when you're not here. So we look forward to them after 106 days of lockdown to returning next week. And we're looking forward to a very fun and exciting week. And some of that information is being communicated to them. And as the young leaders and adults they are, they will play a significant part in determining some of the things that happen over the next few weeks into the end of the year. So we do look forward to that. 
obviously in our area in Cumberland, we've been an LGA of concern and that's had added restrictions for us. So we do appreciate how tough that's been. And in transitioning back to school, we're putting a number of measures in place. So the school day when students actually return will look different. And we've done that after much consultation, uh, survey of students and staff um, around how we'll get the most effective uh, well-being and learning outcomes from now until the end of the year. So that information has been shared and it's very important that we, we understand that. Um, it is a staggered return. So we do have Year 12s returning on the 18th of October. And on the 25th, we look forward to welcoming all other students. And really the, the procedures and regulations and safety precautions will put in place. Mr. Blomfield will go through in more detail. But um, it would be very important that we all work together to make sure that uh, we are successful in, in following those. One of the things I'd like to talk about is opportunities. Um, it'd be very easy for us to sit back and go, well, we've gone through all this and we've missed stuff. But learning doesn't work that way. Learning, learning is a lifelong journey. And it's not where we are at a point in time along that journey as we go through school. Of course, at the end of year 12, there is a culmination point to the end of secondary schooling. So I don't want people to be panicking or stressing about it. There is a long way for us to go for, for the majority of our learners, year 11s included. And it's about looking at the opportunities that are ahead for us uh, to make the most of the learning opportunities that we've got. <coughs> and we have worked hard. And I want to thank the staff, the leaders of learning, the house coordinators, executive team, particularly around all the work that's gone in the background not only planning the learning that has been taking place whilst we've been in this lockdown period, but what does the roadmap in our classrooms look like going forward? And how do we get to the points where students will be able to follow their pathway to success? So I think that's really important that we don't focus on a point in time and we think about the, the journey. And to students, I would say to you particularly, let's focus on your next step, not what you've missed, but the next step to get you where you need to go and take control of that and focus on your strengths. And the greatest strength that we have as a community, the greatest strength we have with the professional expert staff that we have is by working together. So if you need help, you ask for it. If you get stuck, what's your next point for support? Use the resources of your, of your fellow students and peers and your teachers effectively to help you get where you need to go. So it's no need for, for people to be overly anxious about what's happened over the last 106 days. And I want you to be optimistic and really engage in what's going to be the next four, five, six weeks, what's going to be the next 12 months. And as we work together as a whole community, not just a school community, to live in a society that we need to live with and exist with COVID or whatever else comes along, uh, that we do that successfully and make the most of every opportunity. There will be a lot of opportunities offered over term four into next year. Next year will be a very special year for the college. It's the 80th year uh, since Patrician Brothers was founded. So it's 80, our 80th anniversary. And we'll be making the most of that year to celebrate not only the journey of the school, but the talents that you have. So we'll be making some announcements later in this year about some of the special programs we'll put in place. And I've just put a, uh, a quote on that screen. Um, the road to recovery will not always be easy. But it will take, but I will take one day at a time, focusing on the moments I dreamed about for so long. So keep that in mind. We will take one step at a time. Uh, week one, when all students come back on the 25th, there will be some teething uh, and, and changes that we need to put in place. And we'll work through that. And then week two, we'll work through what we need. By the end of the year, we'll be along that road to recovery and to getting towards uh, achieving your goals. Just the last thing I'd like to speak to about before I hand to Mr. Blomfield to go through some really important details about what it'll look like when you come back to school is this idea of being ready to learn and COVID safe. Mr. Blomfield will go through many details about that and there'll be a lot of information and that will be sent to, to families and to students about the expectations. At the end of the day, we need to maintain a COVID safe environment and we need to um, comply with the public health orders. And there's not really any negotiation around that because we don't have room to negotiate. We have very stringent um, uh, uh, guidelines and restrictions we have in place that we will have to follow. So, I mean, the first thing I would like to say to people, when you come back and you ask to do something, as always, and it's not a change, is it's yes, sir, yes, ma'am, how can I help? 
Okay, that's that's really important. So come back with that attitude. The other thing is coming back ready to learn. We are coming back from 106 days of not being at school. So some of the habits and routines that we need in place to be successful at school may have waned a little bit. So I'm asking you over this week, uh, and particularly next week for students in year seven to 11, so let's start thinking about those routines and habits that make you successful. So things like uniform and grooming, which you know go without saying that are important, making sure you have your equipment, your device, um, You've got limited opportunity to borrow devices and you won't be able to share devices when you come back under the COVID regulations. Your self-discipline, your goal setting, and those positive behaviours we talk about for learning all the time, you'll need to really focus on getting those in place so you're ready to participate. And I know from talking to many students, we really miss being in that classroom environment. So let's come back and make the most of that. We want you to enjoy the company of your friends, but of course in a safe way. And just be ready to be kind and empathetic to others because this journey has been very difficult and people have had a whole different range of experiences over this time. People are coming from a whole different set of um, family circumstances, uh, particularly in terms of people who've had work and haven't had work. So we need to be at our best, to be ready to listen to our friends, to be tolerant of differences and just be kind, as we always speak about. So we're looking forward to everyone coming back. Okay, on that note, I'll hand to Mr. Blomfield to talk about some of the procedures and details of what school will look like when we come back. Thank you, Mr. Blomfield. Okay, Mr. Simich, let's, next slide, please. And again, okay, so here are the dates Mr. Easton just shared with them. Year 12, you are back on Monday next week and years 11 to seven, you are back the following Monday. So classes continue to run um, up until those dates remotely. And as you already know, and as, as we're already working with, those are the times that we're running classes. So no surprises there, we will remain using these times for the rest of the year. Now, what you notice though for years seven to 10, which is new to you, after lunch, which we'll have at school, there will be scheduled workshops from 1.15 to 2.30 when the day ends. Those workshops are targeting, helping you catch up and keep up with all the stuff that you might've missed. So there'll be, There'll be um, workshops with um, Kappa, where you get an opportunity to do some artwork or, and those TAS, some of the TAS skills. There will be literacy and numeracy work. Uh, and then there'll be a, a, an array of other activities. So the day will run from nine till 2.30 on a regular basis from this point forwards. Thanks, Mr. Simich. Uh, Mr. Easton said that the New South Wales Public Health Orders are what direct our decisions around how we run the school. And those, this is the list of things that are current today, because as you might know, things changing regularly and rapidly over the course of the last couple of weeks. Just read that, then I'll briefly go through them. There's nothing particularly surprising, I hope, in that list. Uh, yes, you will have to wear masks in classes and, and I've written there worn correctly. Uh, it's not negotiable, unfortunately, and as uncomfortable as that may be for you and for us, um, it is a regulation uh, and you, will, you are required to comply with that, that expectation. Uh, social distancing, and we will have cleaning of desks as we move through the college. Um, what we're going to do also is run classes in a designated space. So year seven, you will have a space in which you spend your four periods of the day rather than moving around the school. There will be some exceptions and we'll publish that to you in the next week. But to minimize the cross contamination possibilities, uh, you will be largely in the same space for each day um, with recess and lunch. 
Certainly we can do that outside, but it will be again designated by stage groups. Uh, so you seven and eight will have one area, nine, 10, 11, 12, but you will be allowed to play games during those breaks within those stage groups. But overriding all of that, if you are sick in any way, um, for the safety of your peers, our staff and your family, uh, you're asked to stay at home and get tested if you need to and let the school know, because it's important we know um, how you're traveling, both you and your family. Okay, so what will the days look like? Well, I've said that already. 9 a.m. to 30, uh, or you're waiting for a bus. So the buses will start running again on the 25th of October. If you need to wait for a bus, that's fine. Uh, they, but they won't be coming any earlier than 3.05. The rest of that information is fairly self-explanatory. Okay, thanks, Mr. Sinich. So here's a list of questions I thought you might be asking, and I'll answer each one of them. You do not have to be vaccinated to return to school. Uh, the government, however, is very strongly recommending that you are vaccinated. Um, I understand there's a, a range of family and health issues around vaccination, uh, but it, being vaccinated means you're protecting yourself, you're protecting your family first and foremost. And, and if you've watched the news, you'll know that family transmission has been the most common source of infection for people. Do I have to return to school? Well, yes, most certainly you do. Uh, however, um, as always, if there are reasons that you are sick or unable to attend, um, mum, dad, or someone at home needs to let us know uh, whether we are expecting you or not. Uh, yes, you have to wear a uniform when, once we return to school on the 25th of October. Uh, and that will be summer uniform, so no, no jackets required. Uh, so summer uniform. And yes, there will be sport on Thursday. So you wear your sports uniform on Thursday. You will get a school report at the end of this semester. Um, it might look a little bit skinnier than normal because we haven't covered quite as much which is why it's been so important that you keep submitting work um, up until this point and continue to submit work so that we have something to report to your parents. If you don't submit anything, we haven't got anything to say. Um, there won't be any whole school assemblies or functions because that's probably going to be restricted by COVID. But again, if the health orders change, uh, any of these responses might, might also change. Will all teachers be back at school? All of our teaching staff will be back at school on Monday the 18th, um, unless there's particular reasons around vaccinations or health. So similar to you. But yes, we know that the majority of our teachers will be back and, and ready to go. And, and I can assure you they're looking forward to seeing you return to school. Uh, I've answered the sport. When does term end? Well, I know you're probably already counting down. Uh, term ends in the week of December the 11th, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and, and we'll talk about how that all sort of wraps up as we approach that. I prefer having spent so long in lockdown, you don't count down to being released again, but you just make the most of every day while we're back at school. Thanks, Ms. Simich. Okay, I'm gonna hand over to Ms. Cook, who's gonna take you through briefly just a few changes, and then we're gonna have a look around the school grounds. Good morning, everyone. So just wanted to go through a um, couple of housekeeping kind of issues. I wanted to thank everyone from years eight through to um, 12 who have, participated in the many different processes in regards to changing patterns of study and subject selection that have been a lot more challenging under the circumstances. So thank you to everyone who has submitted the paperwork and we are processing um, that and creating next year's timetable, which is an exciting thing. So just to go through the students that are in year 11 moving into year 12, we did launch the process of changing your pattern of study, which is a twofold process because we do need parents sign off. So there was a Google form that needs to be completed. 
And I also need an email confirmation from a parent. At this stage, I have a number of students who have completed the form, but I don't have parental permission. So if you know that applies to you, um, if you can speak to your parents and get them to send me an email in regards to that. Those changes will be happening as a staggered approach um, because we need to wait, make sure that you've completed your preliminary content. And as soon as that content has been finished in each course, then I will make those changes. So there's to be no student leaving their regular pattern of study until they get an email from myself confirming that. In regards to the stage five elective process, thank you to everyone that got their forms in. The lines have been created um, for next year. If you did not submit your form, when we return to school, then I'll be individually meeting with each of you to discuss your elective options for next year. Um, we also need to think about the students moving into year 11 in regards to VET paperwork. There's a lot of courses um, that required extra paperwork and application forms. So those are the VET courses, the School of Now courses. If you haven't yet submitted those to me, can you please make that a priority as we can't confirm your places with the CJP School of Now or with our cluster classes until we get that paperwork signed off as well. Finally, for years um, eight and nine, we do want to introduce um, to you our opportunity class that will be continuing next year. So this was launched this year and is a combination of expert classes and project-based learning. We have developed the um, program throughout the year and more changes are currently being made to that. So it's a very exciting um, program to be part of. And once you return face to face, we'll be doing the official launch in regards to that for years eight going into nine and nine going into 10. So we're just going to now have a look at some of the artwork that Year 12 submitted for their visual arts um, body of work. The body of work is 50% of the art course, um, a very uh, important component of their studies. And they actually work on this, they start working on it in term four of um, year 11 and um, when they proceed into the HSC course and then spend a number of months working on it. So a huge amount of work that has gone in and we commend and congratulate our year 12 visual arts students. Okay, thank you, Ms. Cook, and uh, I'll just mute that. Uh, thank you, Ms. Cook. Um, and I just wanted to uh, acknowledge all the incredible amount of work that Ms. Cook has been doing for us. Um, obviously, all staff are working very, very hard, but every time we change a timetable or a schedule or do something that's outside of you know, the normal day-to-day -day organization, uh, Ms. Cook's a person who makes it happen and makes sure that uh, teachers are in front of students in front of the right classes at the right time. So, Ms. Cook, thank you very much for the outstanding work. And students, if I can just ask, please make every endeavour to get all your courses of study uh, locked in as soon as possible for next year. It makes uh, the outcome for you so much better the sooner that you do that, but also the amount of work uh, for Ms. Cook is obviously increased if we have to start chasing people. Um, so please 
uh, take responsibility for that, take it on board and make, make sure that when you're asked to return something, you get that back in at the due date uh, and then we can help you. And you now we talk about pathways to success, but you determine that pathway by how you engage and take responsibility for that process. One of the things I spoke about before was opportunities and um, we have taken the opportunity whilst you have been away to, uh, to make some changes. So when you come back to the college, uh, some of the things that you see will be uh, a little bit different to when you left. So um, as we had mentioned earlier in the year, we, our wellbeing centre, our wellbeing hub, as we will call it, uh, the work has commenced on that. We were hoping that would be finished by the time everyone came back and it will be finished about by the time of the original date will to return, but it'll still be a work in progress. So there's a couple of images there. Part of that um, will be where the house coordinators and counsellors and student reception are located. There's a new outdoor kitchenette area there that we can use for a variety of purposes. Uh, so you can see that means that um, our statue of uh, Daniel Delaney has been relocated as well. Uh, and the IT office will also be re relocated as part of that that work and you can see that's gone over to outside where the house coordinator's offices um, uh, has been. Next one. We've also um, moved the library. So the library is now going to be located in what was the Campion space or previously to being called Campion, the uh, RE space. Um, originally that's where the library was and it does make um, utilization of that space a little bit more efficient. And then the Campion teaching areas uh, have been relocated to, um, to where the library was. So, Mr. Simic, you just go to that next slide. Uh, you will see that uh, the furniture has been moved in there, um, one of our campfire settings. And the other thing that's happened is that uh, the purple space, um, uh, the room in there has been removed to make that a bigger open space. And that is a, a great learning space. And in combination, all those learning spaces are now looking fantastic. And along with the opportunities to purchase new furniture and equipment uh, this year, uh, all those spaces are, are looking really, really good. Um, on the downside, um, if you want to utilise the senior toilet block, that is going to be a bit different. Um, we, we have been able to bring that project forward and, again, take the opportunity, if you're not being here, to the demolition of that space that will be finishing, uh, it's probably about eight weeks away from being finished, but you will see that um, we'll have to utilise other facilities, but we're very excited about giving you modern uh, and, and um, you know, state-of-the-art state spaces uh, at the school. So we work very, very hard around that. So that, to me, that's very exciting. And the other thing that's happened uh, and just finishing now, and I took that photo today, is we've had a new solar installation uh, on the main roof um, over the library. Uh, and that's a 60 kilowatt system that's gone in there to replace the five. So that in combination with the replacement of all the lights in the college means we are much more uh, um, environmentally friendly and have a much more sustainable footprint. Well, there's plenty of work for us to do uh, and a lot of areas to, to keep improving in that. Okay, so that's that's what's been happening around. Um, I might just hand back to um, Mr. Mr. Blomfield just to, uh, to finish up in, in the assembly. But just from me, Thank you to all the families. Thank you to the teachers and staff. You've been wonderful and students. You know, you've been great. We're really looking forward to having you back and doing some exciting things for the remainder of the term. God bless. Thanks, Mr. Eason. Um, just to wrap up, and I've got a couple of questions to answer on the Q&A forum. Um, but to, keeping up to date is important over the next couple of weeks. So many of our families are using the school bag app on their phone, both uh, mobile and Andro um, Apple and Android. But can you make sure that someone in your family actually has that school bag app so that they're receiving um, the letters that we send home from school electronically? And we will send a letter to the parents next week, just keeping them informed about uh, what's happening and getting ready for the 25th of October. I have sent something to Year 12s today uh, to keep you updated for next week. Uh, and I'll send emails to all students before, the, you know, by the end of next week. Again, we're waiting as late as possible because, as I said, the health orders might change from the New South Wales government. So we will let you know before you arrive on Monday of the following week uh, what's, what's, what you would expect. So keep checking your email, please. Right? That's the most important thing. Um, I'm going to answer some of the questions 
that have been posted. Um, when we go to school, will you be asking if we got the vaccine? So we're not looking, we aren't required by the government to check vaccine status of students at the moment. Um, I will answer that question again at the end of next week if it changes. But at the moment, the answer is no. Um, having said that, um, if parents are coming on site for any reason, and we prefer that they didn't under the circumstances, they will need to show vaccination status and checking with the QR code. Now, someone's asked, what about the bus schedule? The bus schedule remains the same. So those buses start arriving at 3.05. Um, and if you finish class at 2.30 and you've got to hang around the school, that's okay. Uh, there will be supervision available until the buses leave. Um, having asked that, someone asked if the workshops are, are you required to stay. And yes, the answer is yes. We do expect you to stay for that 1.15 to 2.30 workshop. Uh, it's an opportunity to keep you catching up for your studies. We've missed so much work. You have shorter days um, at the moment, and you've had shorter days and less classes for an entire term. So we're looking to provide as much learning time as we can as you get back, because not only are we wrapping up the year, but of course, everybody is preparing for learning for next year as well. Um, with respect to lockers, they are too close to each other. Uh, yes, that's true, and we can't move the lockers, but we will have to organise some sort of way that manages students moving in and out of lockers um, over the next couple of weeks. So that's, that's a good question to be part of our plans, and I'll let you know that next week. Uh, when will we know what subjects we got into? Um, one of the problems there is that it's a number of students who haven't let us know from year eight going into year nine, from year nine going into year 10, and from year 10 going to year 11 what their subject choices are. So please make sure that you let us know that. Then we can let you know, um, you know fairly soon. Um, I'll have to get back to you on the exact answer to that one. Um, okay, thank you. Yes, okay, so one of the, we have a new staff member joining us at the beginning of this, well, has already started indeed with us. Um, I can't see, I assume he's present. Um, Miss, Mrs. Kate Roberts has been our school counsellor and will continue to be our school counsellor, but we are very lucky to have a, an additional counsellor for three days a week working on Wednesday, Thursdays and Fridays from this point forwards. Um, that is, <laughs> I've, got, I've forgotten your name now. Miss Roberts, you're gonna type that into our question and answer, please. I've just lost that, my apologies. I'll come back to that in a second. Um, the 151 class, we'll let you know how that runs in the afternoons. Uh, school end is 2.30 and the buses are 3.05, okay. Thanks, Mrs. Roberts. So Mr. Miguel Itoisis is our new school counsellor, uh, an additional, I won't say replacement, uh, an additional school counsellor, and, and you'll get the opportunity to meet him next week, year 12, and the rest of the school will get an opportunity to meet him at in week four, the 25th of October. Just a couple of more questions. Um, after school sports are unlikely to run, but we'll keep that option open. Of course, what, what is happening is the health regulations are changing. So netball and Oztag and, and events like that might run, but we can't answer that question just yet. Um, someone asked about whether the uniform shop will be open. I'll have to get back to you because, of course, if you saw those photos of the construction, the um, uniform shop is no longer there. So we'll have to figure out um, where that is, okay? Um, school buses will run the same timetable in the mornings. Yes, is the answer to that. Um, a question about can we choose our sports for Thursdays? We're still working on that. Let us, let's us um, let get a plan in place with Mr. Perinacci about, about sport on Thursdays. Um, given we've got shorter classes as well, then you'll have a period four sport from 11.45 and then we'll probably have sport in the 1.15 slot as well. Uh, so I'll have to get back to you on that. The uniform shop will be open, I've uh, just been informed, so that will be available. 
And finally, two last questions. The, what, what is the 151 class from a year eight perspective? Well, that's a piece of information we'll share with you when you return. So we're, we will be inviting year eights to join the opportunity class, the 151 class. Uh, I can't answer that in this forum, so I will we'll, um, invite you to, we'll provide some information to you uh, as soon as we get back. Um, and finally, not a question, but a comment. And Mr. Hitosis says, thanks for the welcome, looking forward to coming on board. So our, our additional school counselor will, is already counting down the days for you to return. Christopher Shamul, you've got your hand up. Have you got a question you'd like to post in our Q&A? No, he's put his hand back down. There it is. Um, over their holidays and, and just the end of this beginning of this term, we sent numeracy and literacy packages to all students in years seven and eight. If you have not received one, can you please email your house coordinator and we'll see what we can do to, uh, to get that out to you. Uh, and finally, I've answered this question already. Can we leave after period four from school? No, it's still an expectation that you remain for the workshops until 2.30. I'll just say it one more time. You've had a lot of time downtime over the past term in a, in a bit. You have shorter classes. Uh, you have a shorter day, which finishes at 2.30. I see no reason why students wouldn't stay until 2.30 to maximise their learning opportunities um, for the remainder of this term. Um, you can wear sports uniform on Thursdays. On that note, I, I will stop answering questions. That's the last of the questions. If you've got questions, just shoot them to your house coordinators because they've already been in touch with you and, and having answered a questionnaire last week. Um, and to other questions, your parents are also welcome to make phone calls to the school when they say, thank you for being here. We've had 140 people tuning into today's assembly and it will be the last assembly we run from home. Uh, it won't be the last virtual assembly, but it's great that you're here with us. Um, and Mr. Simich on the last slide, just to say, we'll see you soon. And we're looking forward to, to seeing you all back on, on site. So in the meantime, for the next couple of days until we see you, stay well, stay safe and keep, keep working. Keep uh, responding to Google Classroom uh, as, as you have done, so many of you have done for so much of the last term and a, and a bit. Okay, well, God bless you and your families and we'll see you in a, in a couple of days. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.